Good morning, folks. I hope that the run up to Christmas is uh, going to work for most of you. Um, I am going to put this video out intentionally a couple of days before Christmas. Um, a little bit of a point to note uh, about Ford Focus Mark 1 fuel pumps. Now, this subject has come up a few times recently on Facebook, and I thought it'd be a good idea to approach the subject because it has come up several times in the past, like the pollen filter uh an instrument cluster faults mm. essentially uh the main point that i'm going to make about fuel pumps and a mark one focus is unfortunately you cannot access them with a hatch underneath this rear seat bench you have to take the tank off the car well you don't have to take the tank off the car it might make it easier but you have to drop the tank now that's a massive faff and earlier Fords have access hatches. I know Mark II Mondeos have them. I believe earlier Fiestas have them. Unfortunately, by the time the Mark I came round and the Mark III Mondeo, they kind of ditched all that. Uh, they don't provide an access hatch for you to just twist the locking ring and pull it up. Uh, the whole um, fuel pump sender unit module. Um, now you have to drop the tank. And that requires moving the tank strap sideways getting it on a jack, lowering it down gently, and then once you've got enough access, you get in with some uh, big, uh, I call it big water pump pliers will do. You don't need the locking ring tool. That's only for if you're going through the top, if you've got an access hatch, which in this case you haven't. Uh, and then you've got to be very careful of the fuel pipes. There are many people that tend to do uh, a cut round and garages as well and I think it needs to be addressed because for years, people have not done that. They've literally cut using a Dremel and tin snips an access hatch where the grommet goes through uh, to allow the wiring to go into the fuel pump. That's the only thing that's underneath the seat, the grommet that goes into the fuel pump. I'll show you that now. Right, once you've got the rear seat, so literally just take the carpets from underneath the trim. And we see the visual sight of disappointment. Yep, it is just a grommet. And I think it's a cold morning, but I'm just gonna see if I can actually pry this up. It just takes a bit of peeling away and it comes off. Um, so basically all we've got under there really is the fuel tank uh, connection at the top of the pump. There you go, that's it. That's all it's for, disconnect the wiring. Now, what people do is they just cut, I say, this square piece out, maybe a bit up to here. We're using a Dremel and Tim Snips. And oh my God, it looks awful. I mean, I'll see if I can try and get some images up now of other people that have done this job. Oh, I'm sorry, apologies for that. Unfortunately, nobody was actually brave enough to give me an image for copyright purposes. Uh, maybe they were a bit embarrassed about their work. It just looks awful. You don't, you don't do it that way. Ah, uh, Jesus. Basically, what you've done is, yes, you can take the fuel pump out and you can put it back, you know, you can replace the fuel pump back in and then you can sort of, Put the metal back and then you can put some silicon sealant all the way around which is what people do or seam sealer and then when you drive off and you've got this new fuel pump and the car's working and then you smell fuel pretty much 90 percent of the time that is the complaint from doing that and you just well lesson learned i think about that on that one what people also have tended to do is take, is actually cut that exact panel, that exact piece from a scrapyard focus um, and then put that on uh, if they've butchered the original too much. It's pretty poor. Um, it is not, it's not the recommended way of doing this. It's unneat, it's untidy, it's not the proper way of doing it. And would you like a mechanic to do it that way? If you took your car into the garage because it had a fuel pump failure or fuel pump issue, and they said, oh yeah, we've had to replace the fuel pump. We've just, we've just cut a big massive hole in your car. 
Would you like that? I don't think so. So do it the proper way. Drop the tank. And then take the fuel pump out that way. Get it on ramps. If you can start the car, get it on ramps. Because most of the time with fuel pumps. And I'll tell you for one. The main cause. Well, the main symptoms, I should say. It struggles to start. It doesn't work as well on a quarter of a tank. A low tank of fuel. And when you put load on the engine, 2,000, 3,000 RPM, it misfires or it stutters. That's the biggest signs on these that the fuel pump is starting to go. Now, touch wood, I'm on the original pump. But if I have to do this job, then I will do it the proper way. And I will show you on camera. And maybe I will hopefully show you at some point. There are a couple of notes when you're changing the fuel pump. You've got two options. You can either replace the entire unit, which is the sender unit and the whole the whole shebang that you've got the top bit and then the box where the fuel pump sits in. You don't have to. You can just change the pump. But there's one thing you've got to note when changing the pump. There's an outlet to the pump. And that outlet goes into like, uh, you've got an outlet and an inlet. And you've got these orange seals that, that push onto the fuel pump outlets now when you pull the old pump out and replace that you've disturbed the seal and it's most likely they will like push on really easy and you're not going to get a good seal okay so what you do you have to take that um connection out it's like a plastic housing with the seals inside it you gotta open it up and pack it full of washers so that the seal squashes down and the hole gets smaller that the seal produces. So it's very tight to put that housing onto the new fuel pump. So then you're not going to be losing internal pressure within the pump assembly. Because what you'll do is if you just stick a new pump on without um, putting washers in the seals or checking the seals, you could literally put it, start the car and it would have the same symptoms as the old pump. You've lost pressure because the seals are no good. They've been disturbed. But there is a way around that. And there's a video. I think it's I think it's spark plug Steve. If you type in S2170 fuel pump change, he did that exact job. That's where I got my idea from. And I will do the same with mine. So go and watch that video. Really good video. And he drops the tank and he does it under the the uh, in situ. The tank's just lot, kind of lying on the floor and he's replacing the tank underneath the car. That's how you do it. And the biggest telltale sign as well that the fuel pump is going is the fuel pump fuse in the engine bay box starts blowing. I'll show you that now. Right. In the engine bay, you've got the engine bay fuse box, okay, you've got some spare fuses up there. Then you've got a fuse diagram, so you don't know where, uh, if you are confused about certain things, it is there. But see the owner's manual if you're not sure. The fuel pump fuse is this one. So you've got uh, one fuse here, there might be a missing fuse here, and you've got a 15 amp fuse here. Now this is what you use if you're working on the fuel system to depressurize. So if you're changing the fuel filter, you run the car with that removed and then it will basically die after a few seconds of no pressure and then you can change the fuel filter. Same with any other fuel assemblies, like if you're changing the rail or the regulator goes, because these sometimes get a bit leaky um, or a bit weak, as I've found out, then you depressurize the same way. But the telltale sign is if this, um, if this fuse has blown, I will, that's actually, it's a good point. I need to carry a spare 15 amp fuse. Um, this is a good reminder, actually. Um, yeah, 15 amp fuse, carry a few of them around in the car. Because if that blows, then you could get away with putting another fuse in to get you home. Um, unless that blows as well instantly. Sometimes they don't, sometimes they do. Depends on the situation and how bad the pump is. But basically, when it blows, it means the fuel pump is shorting out. It's taking too much electricity. So it ends up shorting that itself out and it needs to be replaced. But you could use a 15 amp fuse to get you home. So you might get away with it there, but that's the biggest sign that the pump's going. And pretty much that's all there is to say. Just do it properly, drop the tank. Hopefully I will do that job at some point and I'll find out how difficult it can be. It's a faff. It's not really difficult, it's just a faff. And I know that we would all love a hatch, nice and simple and easy. You don't have to get on the floor, don't have to get cold. But the truth is, 
it's not that way at all you've got to do it the proper way uh, I really wouldn't like to buy one of these and see that someone has actually done that I would <laughs> what I would do and if you're in this situation if you buy a Focus Mark 1 today and you're ha happy to keep it on the road preserve it whatever and you discover that you <laughs> smells a bit fuel in here and you discover that somebody has put a hatch in and sealed it badly I would take the fuel tank off the car, remove it completely, and I would get somebody or get somebody in to weld a plate, a proper plate. So what I'd do, I'd go to a scrapyard focus and cut that panel out that you need and get a, a, a mobile welder to weld that panel in. So now you've got a proper welded panel and back to how it was. Anyway. See you soon guys, take care. I'm about to come inside because of how cold it is outside today. Um, I just want to actually add to that video very strongly. There are so many videos of how to change the fuel pump in 20 minutes on a Focus Mark 1. Some of them were done uh, by channels in America because obviously the car is very popular over there in, in certain areas. Um, and it's all showing you how to cut the panel. And I'm just thinking, I mean, one, one channel, I'm not going to name the channel, but he's got over 470,000 subscribers. And he's done a video on how to change a fuel pump by basically getting an angle grinder to cut, the pan to cut a square panel out. It's just not the right way of doing it. Seven years ago, seven, eight years ago, when very few people cared about these cars, I think it was more common practice because obviously you've got, you're only having a focus for another six months, you know, banging MX territory. Uh, you, you've got to make it last until you can get a newer car. Your fuel pump's gone. You need a short-term solution. Yeah, cut it open and deal with the fuel smells, which isn't healthy or safe. So, um, yeah, I don't think it is a good reason to do it back then. I don't think it's a, a great reason to do it now. You really don't want to be butchering your own car. Unless you feel that you can get it put back the way it was before, which I doubt. You'd have to take the fuel tank off to have it, a, a panel welded back on. What's the point? You, while you're cutting and, Dremel, and using a Dremel or tin snips to get that panel off and cut so you can get good access to the pump, you could just be taking the tank straps off. So, um, yeah, there's lots of channels and videos how to do this job in 20, 30 minutes by just not bothering to drop the tank. Let's, let's just do it this way. No. No. Wrong. It's wrong. End of. And that's the end of my argument.